have been reading the resurrection stories in Matthew again. And I've been thinking about the emotions of the disciples. Now when Jesus was arrested and tortured and killed, they must have been traumatised, devastated, shocked, frightened. And then on the Sunday morning, some women came along and said they'd seen Jesus alive. How must they have felt then? Elated? Confused? Disbelieving? It must have been a strong emotion, whatever. And then the women said, you've got to go to Galilee. Well, did they believe them? Did they just go? It, I reckon it must take at least, at least seven days to walk from Jerusalem to Galilee. So they've got a long time to think, well, why are we going here? Is Jesus actually going to be there? All that emotion within themselves, the hope, the despair, all mixed together. And then they get to the mountain that the women have told them about and they see Jesus. Well, what elation, what amazing feeling that must have been. And then he disappears from them. But that experience must have been life-changing. So anybody who was writing about it, even if they were writing 20 or 30 years later, must have had those emotions raw in their heart at the time as they were writing. So you, whoever was writing, you wouldn't know that that had that amazing emotional experience. So what's it like when we read Matthew's Gospel? Well, he says this. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, uh, but some doubted. That's all. That's all Matthew's Gospel says about the experience of the disciples. There's no, absolutely no feelings there at all. No heightened emotions. This cannot possibly have been written by an eyewitness, because an eyewitness would have been bowled over by the whole experience. It ain't necessarily so, it ain't necessarily so, the things that you're liable to read in the Bible, it ain't necessarily.